What does the American dream have in common with tilapia? The American dream is this idea that an individual can make it big, from rags to riches, without facing barriers as a result of class or demographic. And it's been described as the ideal. It's the American dream. And for, those, for many, the American dream often requires some sort of socioeconomic class migration. So, for example, perhaps from the lower middle class to perhaps the upper class. And for those who are able to accomplish this feat, they often find that there are invisible barriers that are directly shaped by the environment that that individual experienced in their class of origin. For those who are able to climb the socioeconomic ladder, they often find that there are subtle changes in social cues, and they find it difficult to adjust to these changes, something known as trouble with class passing. Perhaps their new class cohort dresses differently, or talks about different subjects at parties, or even holds their silverware differently. And all of these small changes are a direct result of how the environment shapes our behavior. Now, at this point you might be wondering, what do fish have to do with any of this? Well, it turns out that fish might shed some insight on the way that humans behave. Now, I want to quickly state that I'm in no way a sociologist or a psychologist. What I am is an animal behavioral ecologist. And what I study is the way that animals make decisions during fights. More specifically, I study what's called assessment strategies. So animals are constantly taking in information about costs, about benefits, fighting ability, and they factor this information into an assessment decision or a strategy in which they choose whether to persist in a fight or withdraw. On one end of the spectrum, we've got self-assessment. Under this strategy, an animal will solely utilize private information, so this is often thought of as energy reserves they will fight and fight and fight until the energy is depleted and then withdraw. And then on the other end of the spectrum, there's mutual assessment. And under this strategy, an animal will not only consider private fighting ability information, but then compare it to information about their opponents. So, for example, let's imagine that I was fighting Shaquille O'Neal. Yikes, all right. So it wouldn't take me very long to make a conclusion that I'm clearly outmatched and then withdraw based off of that conclusion using a mutual assessment strategy. And what I wanted to specifically explore was the way that social and environmental context influenced the way that tilapia made choices about contest resolution. And to answer this question, I designed an experiment with two treatments. So first, I had a rich group in which there were primarily larger individuals and there were plentiful resources, so five shelters for five fish. And then my other treatment was a poor treatment in which there were primarily smaller individuals and there was one shelter for the five fish to either share or fight over. And fish spent 24 hours in these treatments and then were fought against each other. And fights occurred between either two fish from rich treatments, two fish from poor treatments, or one from a rich treatment and one from a poor treatment. And what I found was that when fish were both from rich treatments, they used a mutual assessment strategy. So that's when they compared their own fighting ability against their opponent. When both fish are from poor treatments, they used a self-assessment strategy. So that's when they were purely concerned about their own fighting ability. But when one fish was from a rich treatment and one from a poor treatment, most notably, these relationships completely fell apart, which indicates that fish are fighting by different rules, and those rules are a direct result of their personal history and their physical state. When both fish were from the same type of environment of origin, it was clear which, mutual, or which assessment strategy was being used, mutual or self. But it was, there was no discernible assessment strategy when one fish was from a different environment than the other. So, what can we conclude from this? What does the American dream have in common with tilapia? While fish might be engaged in an agonistic interaction, and the rules that they fight by are directly influenced by their personal history and their physical state, humans might engage in a discussion in perhaps a boardroom setting, and the way that they interact with each other might be directly influenced by their current or prior social class. You might imagine that a first generation businessman who perhaps grew up the son of a taxi driver, for example, would engage very differently in a boardroom discussion with a man who perhaps grew up uh, the fourth generation businessman. What's most important is to recognize that we are heavily influenced by our environment and that the way that we engage with others is also directly influenced by our personal histories and our physical state. And 
what we also need to recognize is that we might not be that different from fish after all. Thank you.